Hi Joshua and you're watching 600 Bob's Builds where I build things. In this episode we will be wiring in the motors, relays, and circuit breaker panel on the rotary phase converter. So the first step is to attach, to run BX from the motors to the, uh, to one of the electrical boxes. I'm going to start calling it the primary electrical box so that we don't all get confused throughout this video. Now I call it BX, I think that's actually what you call the stuff that comes with the wire in it probably the more proper term is uh, armored or, uh, armored cable I wrote it down over there that's why I looked anyway it's uh, basically a uh, steel cable you probably seen it mostly in sci-fi's I bet you you have seen a sci-fi with this in it they use it all the time which is one of the reasons I chose it because it looks cool unlike um, steel tight which is basically gray I usually use that, but I decided to use the BX uh, for the cool reason, like I said, but also because it's not springy. So you can bend it and it won't spring back, unlike seal tight, which is more like a rubber tube that you run wire through. It has some spring into it, which would have completely messed up the sliding effect for the primary electrical box. Because this thing slides out and slides in. If there's pressure on it produced by the seal tight or by the covering, it could push the thing out. So that's why I went with BX. So now that I got the BX installed, it's time to run the wires from the primary electrical box to each individual motor. Now, I installed the BX hoping that I could just jam the wire through and have it come out the other side. That didn't happen. So what I had to do was disconnect the BX at each motor and push the wire through and then feed it into the motor. Error counter, it wasn't a mistake, it was wishful thinking. There is a difference. Yes, there is. <laughs> Error counter. So next step is to mount the uh, relays, which I just mounted using quarter 20 bolts. Now, there's a, quite a few relays. There's a relay per motor, which equals four relays, obviously, but there's also a starting relay. And I think I might have thrown in an extra starting relay. I can't remember. So there might actually be six relays in there, plus a transformer to power said relays because the relays are 24 volt AC. And the reason I, reason I did that is, my, well, we do HVAC here, and uh, HVAC equipment uses 24 volt AC contactors, so we had them. Now, if I had to go out and buy the components, I would have foregone or foregone. I would not have done the uh, tr the transformer. I would just in, done 220 coil voltage but eh, I use what I have oh when I say relay just for the record I mean contactor they're the same thing there's no reason to separate two devices just because one is meant to power small devices and one is meant to power large devices what idiot came up with that relay contactor contactor relay they're the same thing just one smaller one's bigger kid Anyway, when I, re when I say relay, I mean contactor. Just accept it. You can leave your angry comments down below. Well, that little rant got me all mixed up, so I'm just going to start over. Five or six relays, or co contactors. Can't remember how many. So I, I, I think I wanted to install two starting relays so that I can start one of the five horse motors and, or one of the ten horse motors. I can't remember. I could go out and look, but it's hold out there anyway install those quarter 20 bolts then I run each motor into these relays now before I did that when I ran the wires I did run all grounding wires that from that came from the motors into the uh, electrical panel that's one of the benefits of having the or not the electrical panel the circuit breaker panel it's one of the benefits of having a circuit breaker panel is that it gives you a nice spot for all your grounding and all your connections basically so with those grounding wires attached to the circuit breaker panel, it's time to run the wires that go from the contactors into the circuit breaker panel, well into the circuit breaker. Each relay gets a, its own circuit breaker because each motor gets its own circuit breaker. And it's probably actually not really confusing now, but just stick with me, there is a diagram at the end. Anyway, ran the wires from contactor to circuit breaker panel, leaving a lot of extra down on the bottom so that the circuit breaker panel can slide in and out easily without the wires getting all tangled up into each other. Oh, and if you're mentioning how I'm running the wires in with the sliding circuit breaker panel, I left enough room in, uh, 
the circuit breaker stops with a couple inches to spare still inside the electrical uh, box so that I can run my wires straight in and without any issues. So now it's time to wire the primary electrical box into the secondary electrical box. Now I'm running a ton of wires up there so I'm using three half inch BX lines or three quarter BX lines, something along those lines. What I'm running up there is I'm breaking off each motor so three wires per motor goes up into the sec secondary electrical box. This is so that I can add balancing capacitors to each motor. This will not only allow me to balance it a lot easier but it will allow me to balance based on motors. So actually right now what I have is one of the motors is has a ton of capacitance on it. This jumps the voltage, basically skyrockets the voltage up the past 300 volts no load. When I run my mill it drops down to around 240 but if I run anything else the voltage is actually too high. I think it's there's a problem with my the motor in my mill. I know it, Anyway, I did this so that the mill can run somewhat effectively without having to run the thing at that voltage all the time. It's actually pretty handy. Anyway, besides the breaking off the uh, motors, I also have all the uh, relays, the controls for the relays going up to the secondary electrical box. And I also broke off the output wires that go onto the circuit breaker panel to the, into the secondary electrical box. This will allow me to model, monitor the voltage coming directly off the circuit breaker panel on the phase converter. This should be the best spot for voltage reference. Now from this picture you kind of see that the secondary electrical box is a bit messy. It looked really nice when I first did it but adding and removing capacitors kind of messed everything up. Anyway you can see that I ran everything to a, ter to a couple terminal strips at inside the secondary electrical box. This allows me to quickly add and remove stuff off the, off whatever. So if I want to add a switch to the uh, one of the relays, I can easily do it. If I need to add more capacitors to a particular motor, I can easily do that. Okay, so now that I confused you all to death, uh, it's time for a schematic to try to clear this up. Okay, so the first one is motors. I'm, taking, I'm stuffing you through this to try to eliminate confusion. So four motors, okay? So each motor is ran to a relay or contactor. Hence who you ask. So from these contactors, it, they're all ran into this circuit breaker box. Now you may see the, the big fat blue line. That's not a wire, that's a bus wet. So pr just pretend that's a big fat cable holding all the individual wires running into the contactors. Now I want to run one side of the control leads on the contactors to the low voltage side of my transformer. Uh, I'm, this is basically the common. Now the other side of the transformer, the high voltage side, ties into the motor one circuit breaker. Now this means if motor one circuit breaker trips, it kills the whole thing. Now I don't know if this is a good thing or a bad thing, but this is the way it is because I don't have any more room for any more circuit breakers in this tiny little panel. And now for the chaos. Now as you can see all the uh, I break off each individual motor on the motor side of the contactor run that into the bus that goes into the uh, secondary electrical box or on this schematic I have it as the upper electrical box. Then I also break off each well I don't break off I run the other side of the control lead on the contactors up to the upper, or the, sorry, the secondary electrical box. This is so complicated, I have to look at my own schematic for reference. And we're done! Well, except for wiring the whole thing into the circuit breaker panel, which, if you're doing this, you should know how to do that. I'm not gonna, I'm gonna show you, mainly because I don't have any good video of it. I didn't do it inside of a closet. Most of the electrical work was inside of a closet anyway, so not a lot of good video. Anyway, I will be making a video, kind of an overview of the base converter, so keep an eye out for that. Oh, and if you're wondering what about controls, I did nothing for the controls. I'm using the same controls I had with the old rotary phase converter, which is just a momentary toggle switch to start it and an on-off toggle switch to, you know, turn it on and off. So still have to work on that see it keep an eye out for that video it will be out sometime this decade I promise sometime between now and 
2020. So if you want to keep up to date on my ongoing projects, uh, follow me on Google+, 610Bob. If you want to see any of my write-ups, go to my webpage, 610Bob.com. If you want to explain the uh, intricacies between relay, the difference of a relay and a contact, you leave a comment down below. Or if you want to tell me that I just confused the snot out of you, leave a comment down below. If you want to say that I am crystal clear, Leave a comment down below and go get your head examined because you obviously ain't right in the head. So, uh, yeah, I think that's it. Thanks. Bye.